Greetings people, tis I, 480 volts, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X. Alright, this is going to be uh, kind of a long video. Um, we're going to go to this place right here, the Omega Ruins. We, we unlocked it earlier with the input code. It's a completely optional place. What is this place? 700 years ago, a monk who defied the teachings was sentenced here. Oh, the traitor Omega, yeah? Omega's loathing of Yevon has turned him into a fiend. They say he liked it underground, out of the light. So, he's here? Scared? Not a chance. Oh, you'd be scared if you knew, Titus. Omega's a staple in the Final Fantasy series. He's one of the... One of the super bosses, usually. All right, so uh, we got some new enemies here. Um, we've got the Halma and the Spirit. Now, really easy. These battles can be very difficult. Um, some of the hardest monsters live here. But if you provoke the Spirits, well, you'll see. You want to provoke the Spirits. Now, the Halmas are armored, so I got to get uh, Oron or somebody to take care of that. Um, I think this is where I figured out that they were armored. Um, and of course I want to try to catch a lot of stuff, so I'm going to be switching to, uh, capture weapons every now and then. I'll explain my setup here in a minute. Let's just get armor break on this guy. Um. Ow. When you provoke the spirits, they cast White Wind on the party. Not on themselves, they cast it on you. And that's literally all they do. So I suggest um, going to town on the Halmas, and then, uh, you know, and then eventually, uh, you, know, you know, just leave the spirit alone, and then, you know, he's just gonna be casting White Wind all the time, and no matter how much the Halmas uh, hurt you, that dude should be there to cast White Wind, although Riku is taking a beating. But, I mean, we're getting healed from it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you might notice my HP is pretty high. I've been spending a lot of time grinding. Um, as I've actually been grinding here. This place is a great place to do grinding. Um, so yeah. yeah. Now, I didn't really explain my weapon setup in the previous uh, couple videos. I explained equipment. Basically, I gave everybody stoneproof. You definitely want stoneproof in this area. I gave everybody stoneproof, and I gave everybody uh, basically HP plus 20. HP plus 30 on the Tetra armor stuff, and I think there was already HP plus 10. So that's why some people's HP is really high. But as far as weapons, well, I, I took that variable steel that I bought for Titus and I customized, um, what did I customize on it? It already had strength plus five and strength plus 10. So strength plus 15. I customized something to it. I customized first strike to it using uh, a teleport sphere, and that basically turned it into uh, a sonic striker. So there you go. Uh, I'm letting everybody else get their turns in because, uh, yeah. Uh, Riku, you saw me give her stone strike on an iron glove. Some of the enemies here are vulnerable to, uh, or susceptible to instant death. Some of them are susceptible to petrification. You can switch Riku's weapons out accordingly. In terms of sphere gritting, it, sphere gritting kind of happened throughout this area. Um, and it's all off screen, so I'll explain what I end up getting in a couple minutes. I will say this this whole cave, I'm going to split it up into three videos, I think. And this first one's going to be very long. Alright, got another new enemy here. Um, the uh, the Adamantois. He also, can be, he also can be provoked. By the way, I will just say first strike and petri and uh, stone proof are basically a necessity in this area. And for first strike, it's only really for one enemy, but yeah, you'll see. Now you can steal healing waters from this guy, but yeah, you want to provoke him. Now he's not neutered when you provoke him; he'll do stuff to you, so you want to watch out for that. All right, so uh, he's armored, so I got to bring uh, Oron in. By the way, you're noticing that Oron, all of his MP stuff says, all of his, you know, stuff that requires MP, it says it only costs one. 
And same with Yuna. I customized uh, one MP cost for some of my characters. That's, uh, okay. This guy, he uses the Breath Command. That's all he does when he's been provoked. Um, so when his turn's about to come up, I just advise having Yuna cast uh, Null Blaze on everybody. Um, right before his turn comes up. I forgot that's what it is. Yeah, so I used, uh, so when I won those three stars from the uh, Monster Arena, you can use 23 stars to customize one, in bleh, one MP cost. So that's definitely a thing you want to do, um, for characters like, uh, now Oron already has it on his Mirasame, so I don't need to worry about that. Now this is where you want to bring in Yuna and have her cast, uh, Null Blaze again, because this guy's about to go. I mentioned that I gave Lulu uh, a weapon that had Magic Booster on it. Uh, and that doubles the uh, power of your magic, but it also doubles your MP cost. Um, what's cool is, if you customize one MP to Lulu, as I did, I gave it to her weapon. No she... One MP happens first, and then the double MP cost happens, so... All of her spells now cast 2 MP, not 1 MP, which is still worlds better than it would be if I didn't have 1 MP cost on there. So that I highly recommend customizing 1 MP for at least Lulu and uh, Yuna. If you, if you buffed Kamari out magically, you might want to give it to him. Um, like I said, Oron already has it on his Mirasame. That left Waka and Ortidas, and eventually I ended up giving it to Waka. It was a tough call because uh, Tidus does things like cast haste, and I ended up learning uh, cure and the null blaze, null shock, null tide, and null frost for him. And uh, so he definitely could benefit from it. I gave it to Waka though because, well, I ended up getting an. Uh, uh, something on, uh, Waka's Sphere Grid, and yeah, we captured the Adamantos. I'm gonna try to capture everything new. I ended up getting the move Full Break for Waka, which is basically... Not basically, it blatantly is Armor Break, Mental Break, Magic Break, and, uh, Power Break all in one move. It's awesome, but it costs 99 MP. But if you have 1 MP cost, it's a lot cheaper than that. It's just 1 MP. All right, we remember the Gen, the Defender Zs from the Xanarkin Ruins. Well, now we now we got two of them to deal with. Um, I do not recommend provoking them because what will happen is, well, one of them will just do the, I forget what it's called, where he just basically halves your HP. But then the other one's free to do with whatever he wants, so he'll probably just kill, like it happened. I, I provoked one with Titus, and then the other guy killed Titus, and then that just ended provoke. So what I like to do no problem. is uh, get some uh, get some haste going on Lulu and have her use Demi all day. Now, these guys have a ton of HP, um, more than four digits worth of HP. So that's why it's saying that Demi's doing nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine because Demi cuts it in half. Well, actually, Demi cuts it in in a, in a quarters in this game. It used used to do it in uh, halves, but there's full break in action right there. Now that guy, because these guys are armored, now he's no longer armored. So yeah, Demi, uh, when you see Demi doing less than 9,999, that's when you know you're starting to get him down. And I like using Demi because it's a great way to... Now, I, I can't capture these guys because they're Machina-based, but Demi is a great way to uh, whittle down the HP of an enemy you want to capture because it's like you can keep damaging them, but you won't ever kill them. And it's a great way to monitor how close they're getting to death, and it's like... When you see them, okay, like that guy, 1,000 something damage, I can probably one-shot him now with Titus. Now it's 588, I can surely one-shot, I could probably one-shot him with Riku at this point. Hey, you. But here. it doesn't matter because like I said, they're, uh, they're Machina and I'm not going to, uh, I can't capture them, but I'll be able to kill them pretty quickly. So yeah, I did a lot of grinding in this area. Eventually, I ended up getting Ultima for Lulu, the Ultima spell. It took a few level 4 key spheres, but I did it. Um, of course, I used double cast Flare a lot. 
Um, what else did I do? I ended up getting Haste and Hastega for Waka. Right now I'm just getting everybody their turn. Somewhere along the line, I got Flea for Riku. You're probably noticing that. I ended up getting uh, Use for Yuna, and I want to say I got Steel from her eventually, but I could be wrong on that. Um, Kamari eventually made his way up to Flare. And eventually... Well, no, he didn't. He did make it to double cast, but that was after I got through with this area. But yeah, look at the the AP we're getting. And those guys occasionally drop level 3 key spheres, so that's pretty nice. Eventually I got the prov Provoke for uh, Riku, and that makes uh, fighting those guys a whole lot easier because I can just have Titus Provoke one and Riku Provoke the other. Alright, new enemy! These guys are... Uh... I don't know what they are. Well, let's... I'll figure it out in a minute. We're sl They're susceptible to Sloga, whatever they are. Machea. Machea, I think is what they're called. They're, they're nothing too special about them. They are susceptible to petrification, so I'm gonna have Riku switch to her stone weapon real quick. And... Yeah, that's what happens. You just instant petrify, and you still capture them. Now, if the enemy's resilient enough to it, then petrification won't work, but there you go. But yeah, I did a lot of AP grinding. Um, basically moved Waka, Titus, and Oran around to get strength nodes whenever they could, and speed nodes for Waka, or sorry, Oran. I'm noticing Waka's been falling behind on this LP. He's not as strong as I like, and he's kind of slow compared to everybody else. Um, Oran is actually catching up. I don't think he's as slow as Kamari, but like even Lulu <laughs> seems like she's catching up in terms of speed. But Oron and Titus are pretty darn strong at this point, especially with all the strength boosting stuff. Uh, what did I do for Waka? I gave him one MP cost, I already mentioned that. But that's only on his, uh, all-rounder weapon. Anyway, this is the Zarus. This is annoying battle formation because you see a treasure chest, right? And you think, oh, let me steal from it. Nothing to steal. Hello! And that, my friends, is called a Mimic. This is one of the most annoying battle formations you're going to get into because that Zarus has incredibly high uh, evade. It's nothing Waka can't handle. And most of the time, Titus can do it. But he can do a lot of damage. He can silence your characters. And then on top of that, you got the stupid Mimic. I hate the Mimic. Um, he's armored, I think. But I don't know that I can use Armor Break on him. Maybe I can. There's different flavors of the Mimics. They have a ton of HP. Some of them are, like, really resilient to uh, physical attacks, and some of them are resilient to magic attacks. And as you can see, I just decided to chipmunk through this because this is really um, taking a long time. I decided to bring out Anima, and even though Pain does good damage, he does good damage back. And then I think I tried... Yeah, I just ended off right there. I just dismissed Anima. And I went to all this trouble to just whittle him down. I didn't want to use Armor Break because... Oron's not wearing a capture weapon. I didn't want to accidentally kill him. So I just did this the old-fashioned way. And then I found out... You'll see here in a minute. Well, it'll take a while. You can actually give them a candle of life, and it'll cast Doom on them, and they'll die in three turns. But yeah, I did all that to just learn that he can't actually be captured, so he doesn't count as a capturable monster. So you know what? Most of the time, I'm just going to run from those guys. Now, they do give a crap ton of money, though. That is the nice thing. But in my mind, they're just not worth it. Oh, and if you haven't figured out, there is only one save point in this entire area, and it's in the beginning. And we got a new enemy. This is the... Uh... 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 Well, I'm waiting for my past self to actually, like, show the cursor on it, but, uh... I don't know what this thing is called. It's a bomb-type enemy. Uh, hit it three times and it'll self-destruct. So, you be very careful with that. Yeah, most of the time I just run from Mimics. They're just... They're not worth my trouble. Okay, Purobos, I think is what they're called. 
Um, don't use full break on them. They are armored, but you would want to use Oren's armor break because it does more damage. Well, unless your Waka is more buff than than mine, my Oren is. In which case, you know, go crazy. But my Waka is kind of sluggish right now. Because remember, you only get three shots at them. Now, I want to say Lulu double casting a spell, or anybody double casting a spell, only counts as one shot. So you might do that. You're doing double the damage at that point. But yeah, one of these guys is going to explode raid on me, and that's not going to be nice. But yeah, Mimics, I end up running from them, and the Zarus is an annoying enemy too, so it's just, I don't like that formation. And it's one of the more common formations that I run into. And I'm not above saying that, yeah, I end up running from a lot of battles in this area. I just, at this point, I'm not terribly concerned about AP. I will still, like, make room for it. Like, I'm still going to make sure everybody gets their turns. But it's not, I mean, we're pretty far ahead. So uh, I it clicked in my head that these guys are actually weak to Blazaga being fire bomb type enemies. So there you go. But yeah. And make sure you're wearing your capture weapon, Waka. I do need to. I do need to capture some of these guys. I don't really need to, but it, for, for completionist's sake, I want to. Um, if you want to take advantage of the monster arena, you definitely want to uh, check out the uh, the. You you want to check it out online. There's a whole lot of guides that'll help you uh, get some really really awesome stuff. I think if you co I think. If you capture one of every single fiend in the game, and that includes, like, in the final area. Obviously not counting Machino-based weapons and other stuff. Uh-oh, that's gonna hurt. That can't be captured. Thanks! Thanks, just killed Titus, but, well, at least Yuna can life him back to life. I think if you capture one of every fiend, you get, like, 99 Dark Matter pieces, I think. And you can use those to teach, uh break damage limit where your characters can actually do more than four digits of damage and in the ps2 version that was just that was a cool thing to have for bragging rights in the hd version it's darn near essential for beating some of the the newer added bosses that and um what is it break uh hp limit where you uh get uh five digits worth of hp you can get that from the three stars. But I wanted the three stars for one MP cost. There's ways to get more three star weapons. But yeah, I was saying there's only one save point in this entire area and it's at the very beginning. So typically what happens is I'll go for a while then it's like the enemies wear me out and then I gotta backtrack to the save point. I'm gonna show this battle because watch this. There's a bit of a randomness, not randomness, watch this. I stole a turbo ether from that chest. And it opened, and there's no mimic. Sometimes those chests are real, and you don't have to deal with a mimic, so you kind of just don't know. But one one way one way or another, that Zarus is annoying. I was trying to debate if I should bring the other characters in. I was like, you know what, just, just kill them. I hate those things. Yeah, only one save point, so I tend to... And there's no way out of this area. That save point's the only way out. So, yeah. And here's a new enemy, Wraith. This guy also cannot be captured. So, yet again, I would advise... Well, me personally, I'm going to end up running from this guy after this battle. He's armored, but I don't think he's susceptible to armor break. So, you need a weapon with piercing to get through that. And I want to say magic doesn't do too good on him, but I could be wrong on that. We'll see. We'll see what I end up doing. He casts Doom a lot. Which, uh... Puts a timer on you, which I would care about, but you can just move your character to the back lines, and then they... Don't have to worry about that, so there you go. Alright, I believe Lulu is going to handle things. She's going to double cast... Flare, I think that's the way to go. Okay, so magic does work on him. But yeah, I, I definitely advise getting full break. 
That's a really, really handy move. But again, it costs 99 MP, so you might want to have uh, 1 MP cost on it. And spoiler alert, I will be getting 1 MP cost for Titus later on in the game, but it'll be after this area. Alright, let's keep on going. Thankfully, that Wraith doesn't have a whole lot of HP. I feel like I didn't give everybody their turn, but maybe I did. Just keep on going. There's all sorts of... This area is a maze, too. There's all sorts of hidden passages. Not hidden passages, but secret little corridors. And we got another new enemy. This is the... Uh, what is he called? Uh... Okay, well, we don't get to see what he's called just yet. Floating Death. Um, like a lot of eye enemies, I believe he can confuse you, I believe. Um, I also believe he's susceptible to silence, so you might want to use that to your advantage. Like most flying enemies, he's got really high physical evade, and um, or, uh, Waka is pretty good in handling that. Though in a pinch, Titus can do it. Man, he just is taking a beating. Yeah, you don't want to... You don't want to come into this area... Well... When you come into this area, it's going to overwhelm you. When you come into this area for the very first time, you're going to be overwhelmed. There's no way around it. The nice thing about it is you can use this area to grind out your SP and... Or your AP until you get some, you know... You know, some... You, this is why I, I talk about... Throughout the whole game, I was talking about how I wanted to prioritize strength for Titus, Oran, and Waka. This is why. Because this area is tough. And they mentioned Omega, so we know Omega from previous Final Fantasy games. I don't think it's a spoiler to say we're going to be fighting him. And I don't think it's a spoiler to say that he's one of the hardest bosses in the original game. In the original game... In the HD version, we've got plenty of other super bosses. Which, by the way, I personally am not going to be dealing with that. I've thought about it. I've kind of agonized over it. I'm, I'm not going to. And if I do, it won't be for a very, very, very long time. You gotta, like, get your celestial weapons in order, and that requires, like, so much work. You got to do all this other stuff, and I'm I'm not. One day I will, but don't don't hold me to it. Also, I love this music. All right, so we got three chests here. As you can see, I get into a battle, and the rest of the chests disappear. That's nice. Um, you have to open those chests in a certain order. Um, to get items out of them, but uh, it's randomized, so there's really it's just trial and error. If you open the wrong one at the wrong time, uh, you get into a battle and they all disappear. So there you go. Also, the encounter rate here is nuts. All right, this guy right here is the reason you want to have uh, first strike on somebody. You want some of this? It's the Great Marlboro, Marlboro. like uh, his little brothers from uh, the Cavern of the Stolen Faith. He likes to use. Uh, he is susceptible to provoke. The problem is... He always ambushes you. It is an automatic thing when you encounter him that he will ambush you. Which means he's free to use bad breath on your party and completely piss you off. But if you have Titus or anybody really equipped with first strike, you have a chance at you know, getting the first move in, and you can provoke them, and they won't do bad breath. Instead, he'll do this acid attack, which does hit the entire party for, well, a, a bit of damage that you shouldn't ignore, so you definitely need to be careful. Um, and he has a ton of HP. I recommend, for now, until we get a little bit more powerful, I recommend bringing Lulu in and having her double cast Demi all day, and maybe have somebody else uh, cast haste on her so she can do it that much faster. Like I said, Demi's great for capturing enemies because it's like, you'll never kill them, because you know, you can't capture enemies with magic, so it's, you'll never, you'll never accidentally kill them before you're ready to capture them, and then, Come on, chin up. Ice 
when their HP starts getting really, when the HP that you damage them for starts being less and less and less, then you know you're, you've almost got them, and then you can just have somebody with a capture weapon lay the final blow. I don't think they're susceptible to instant death or petrification or anything like that. I believe those adamantoises were susceptible to petrification, but I could have been wrong. Yeah, see, now that it's no longer four nines, I can tell that I'm starting to get them down. And see, it's just... We're slowly cutting them down. And we captured him! Excellent. Excellent. Uh, that's a battle I will not be running from because I, I, I think those guys... Some of these enemies I, I run from because to me it's just not worth it. It's like, you, the stuff you gotta do... Oh, editing. Yeah, I do a lot of that. I do a lot of jumping around here because uh, heading back to the save point and stuff like that. Oh, another new enemy. This guy, he... Uh, Hang on, what is he called? He is called the Varuna. The first thing he does is cast haste on himself. And it, it like overrides your first strike. He gets that in before you can do any, before first strike even happens. You can dispel haste, but eventually he'll cast it on himself again. I thought about casting reflect on him. So that way if he tried to cast haste on himself again, it would just bounce off. But reflect doesn't work on him. And I don't think a lot of stuff works on him. He is susceptible to petrification, but he has a high resilience to it. That's why I moved Riku out of the way, because I want to let everybody else get their turn on. And this guy also likes to cast slow on it, on people, which is really annoying. He casts slow on one of my slowest characters, so that's, that's really nice. Yeah, just do haste, Hega. Yeah, get a nice little Kuraga going. And then just bring everybody else to get their turns in. Sit and, back and watch. Yeah, and then when we're ready, we'll have uh, Riku try to petrify him, but all I can say is good luck on is getting it to work. Does he look grumpy? Yeah, he does look grumpy. Yeah, you might want to cast Petra, uh, Haste on Riku. I'll tell you what, Riku is like a bull- I think I'm gonna do just that. Oh no, this is where I- I think this is where I- I tried to, uh... Oh no, I- okay, never mind. Never mind. I was about to say, Riku with haste on is like a bullet. She just goes bam, 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 bam. It's incredible. And I just keep dispelling haste. Come on, guy. This is another battle. This is another battle I'll be running from. It's just not worth it. All the stuff you got to do. I'll fight the great Marlboros. I'll fight the Adamantoises, but this guy, nah, he's annoying. Got you covered. Oh, do you now? Yeah, put haste on Riku, please. Thank you. She needs to be moving. See, look how fast her turn comes up. It's great. Imagine if she had quick hit. That's another reason why I gave Waka one MP cost, because he has quick hit. Now, so does Titus, but I could only give it to one or the two, one or the other. Mana focus, I don't think we want to let him do whatever it is he's trying to do with that. But you die already. Everybody's gotten their turns in already. Emblem of Fate. That can't be good. Ow. We're still alive. It actually didn't do that much damage.
There we go. Goodness gracious. It's all in the wrist. It's all in the wrist? Why couldn't you have done that sooner? But yeah, I do a lot of editing and jumping around here because, uh, yeah, a lot of times I just go back to the save point and it's like, I don't need to show that again. So I try to cut back to relatively where I started going and then it looked like there was something there and then there wasn't anything there. And Yeah, this area is a little confusing if you don't know where to go. It doesn't help that your mini-map isn't filled out. You have to, you have to fill it out as you go. Ah, more new enemies. These are the Master Coriels. They are susceptible to petrification as well as silence. So I'm going to have Yuna use our Spiffy New... Oh, never mind. I'm not. I'm going to have her heal Riku. Never mind. Riku is going to use our Spiffy Use command. And she's going to use a silence grenade. If I can find it. Yeah. I have a good bit of them. Yeah, you want to definitely silence those guys because they'll do they'll do nasty stuff. Now, they can still use their blaster move, so watch out for that, despite the fact that they're silenced. And yeah, don't leave that floating eye alone too long, or don't leave them alive too long, because you don't want them confusing people. Yeah, this is where I found out that he could use blaster, and I was like, what? I was like, yeah, you need to die. Fortunately, their uh, res resistance to petrification is very low. Riku should be able to do it in one one shot. Get, bu get back up, Waka. You're on the clock. Yeah, just kill that guy. That really wasn't my best move. I really need to kill that floating eye, and now I gotta, like, wait for everybody else to get their turns in. Glad he didn't get confused. Alright, Waka, finish him, please. Oh, I like that the silence icons from the Victory Master Coriels are still there. What'd she say? Victory for now? So yeah, if you notice my levels changing, uh, my sphere levels changing and all that good stuff, and new abilities suddenly appearing, pay no attention to it. I do all that uh, sphere grinning stuff off screen, it's just easier that way. And sudden cut back to the beginning, because I realized there was a passage down here that I ignored. That's nice. And the map's already filled out because I've already been this way. If you get tired of fighting battles, you know, you just uh, put on... Put on no encounters if you have it. Yeah, I think Stone Strike is probably a more a better thing to have than uh, than uh, Death Strike, but you may want them both. Goodness gracious, the encounter rate here is insane! It's just going clash, clash, clash. All right, some more new enemies. These guys are Demonolith. Now, these guys are the reasons why you want to have uh, Stone Proof on. Um, they are susceptible to silence. Um, so what you want to do is you want to... Uh, okay, Riku... Uh, Yuna doesn't have that. I, I thought I had given her the use command. And at this point, this is when I realized, oh, I haven't done that yet. But I do get it for her eventually. But yeah, just use another silence grenade. Drop it like it's hot, and there you go. Now, about the only thing they can do... Uh, let's see. Well, they have a move that... Well, you'll see. They are armored. So I like to have Orin use armor break on one and have, uh, what's-his-name use, uh, full break on the other. You notice I switched to overtime when I do that because 
Uh, I want him to uh, not use any MP. Overtime, that, uh, what was it? I think it was called an all-rounder, the weapon that I bought for Waka. And, um, it became overtime when I, I think when I put one MP cost on it, that's when it became overtime. I don't remember. Yeah, that breath move can petrify your entire party. But if you have Stoneproof as I do, it's no problem. But they do, I remember now, they can also turn you into zombies and curse you and put darkness on you. So that's slightly annoying. Um, and I went through a few um, remedies and Asuna spells before I learned, or before I realized that... Um, Curse is dealt with the same way Zombie is. It's dealt with by the... Uh, holy Waters. But it took me a while to realize that, and until then I was using uh, Remedies, and they weren't working. I'm not exactly sure what Curse does in this game. I know in the previous game it prevented you from getting any experience or um, ability points. But I don't remember what it does in this game. Yeah, just double ca double cast. Oh, I was gonna say double cast Demi, but I guess we're double casting Flare instead. These guys have a ton of HP. Either we're not gonna accidentally kill them with Flare anytime soon. Ah, and now Walk has been zombified and cursed and all that good stuff. I mean, I don't really know what Curse does. I don't see the difference. Zombie doesn't really do anything except... I mean, it does, but like... Like in the SNES days, if you got zombified, you kind of lost control of your character. They didn't turn against you. They fought for you, but you couldn't really control them. Okay, we captured one of them. And then there was the whole thing with, uh, you know, curing and poison working in reverse. Yeah, quick hit. Quick hit is awesome. Oh, nice! That's not gonna help you! Yeah, I forget what these guys do if you don't silence them, but yeah, you want to silence them. And then this is when I realized, oh, you know what? I can use Holy Waters, and that should break the curse status. I think that's when I realized it. And since he's just got Zombie to it, it breaks them both. I think it actually broke everything, and then so I was like, okay, I need to start bringing everybody else in. <laughs> Who makes these things? Uh, I guess Sin? Or this Yu Yevin dude, who we don't really know much about. I'll explain Yu Yevin later. Well, I didn't capture him, but I already captured one of them, so it doesn't matter. I sometimes run from those battles, and I sometimes don't. It depends on my mood, because they do take a lot of time to kill. But they're, to me, they're not as stressful as some of the other battles. Ah, more chests. Ah, another new enemy, along with our spirit friends. I like the spirit enemies because when you provoke them, all they do is cast white elements. Now, those things, I think they're called dark elements. They are susceptible to insta-death. And you might want to capitalize on that pretty quickly because they like to use flare on you. Thankfully, thankfully our spirit friends got us covered with white wind. But yeah, it's like, I need to kill him kind of quickly. Yeah, Death Strike, not Stone Strike. There we go. So I think the only three enemies we can't capture... 
in this area are in this area are the Defender Zs because they're Machina, the Wraiths, and the um, Mimics. I think those are the only things we can't capture. In terms of enemies that you run into, bosses, that's a different thing, obviously. Just have everybody get their turns in. You keep using White Wind. Not doing a whole lot for Riku, though. It's because her HP is so low, because she took such a beating. Because those guys decided they were only ever going to uh, attack Riku, so there you go. Can you die? Yeah, heal Riku up. She needs it. You have the MP to spare. <laughs> Maybe I should have uh, fast forward through this battle, but whatever. You like that? All right, more chests. Ooh, level four key sphere. That was the right one, and that was the wrong one. So I don't even get to open the other chest. That sucks. Oh well. Tis the way the cookie crumbles. You guys are toast. I'll be right back. I thought I'd leave that little bit in because I thought it was funny how Titus was like talking trash to them and then he runs away saying, I'll be right back. You guys are toast. I'll be right back. I thought that was funny. Ah, a glyph. That does nothing. Remember that glyph for later. I actually ended up skipping an entire section of this video, or in this video, I, I, I ended up skipping an entire section of this area, but I will show it in the next video. Or actually, yeah, in the next video. So four chests, defending bracer, okay. Turnover. And wrong chest, so I don't get to open the other one. But over here is our final Albed primer. And I got the uh, Albed rank uh, Sikidan, I think. If you got them all, you get a trophy. I think it's like Master Linguist or something like that. So that's awesome. There's a reward I can get for getting all the Albed primers that I'll show, I believe, in the next video. So yeah, sweet. And what's really cool is if I start a new file, um, I can just transfer all of that over and I'll be able to know the Albed language basically from the start. So like in those scenes earlier in the game where, you know, we met Albed and we didn't know what they were saying, you can actually understand what they're saying now. Oh boy, new enemy, the Master Toneberry. This guy, I got him mixed up with the regular Toneberry uh, in the Cavern of the Stolen Faith. This is the guy that uses the Karma move. Um, so to get around that, you put him to sleep. Um, and you just don't wake him up. You just use magic on him all day. Now, I do want to capture him, so I don't want to kill him with magic. So that means it'll be, uh... We, we can af Well, okay, never mind, we can steal. I was going to say, we can afford to get a couple flares in there, but... If you want to play it safe, just have somebody use Demi on him until, uh... Until his HP is so low that you can, uh, you know you can capture him in a single hit. But yeah, Toneberries. Master Toneberries, whatever you want to call them. They would be... Or I think this is the Toneberry King, actually. No, I don't know what this guy is. Well, the, all I'm saying is, would be one of the most deadly enemies. And they are in some of the other games. But this one, considering he's susceptible to sleep, it's like, wow... Yeah, well, all right. 
won't take them too long to cut down. I think Demi actually hits... Yeah, it does. It hits multiple enemies. That's cool. I'll take care of them. Oh, will you now? I guess I decided to go for one more round of Demi's. Play it safe. Alright, Titus, you should be able to finish the job and capture him. Alright! Oh, that's Master Tomberry. Alright, we got him. Well, I think that's all the new enemies. Now, I'm going to actually end off the video right here. In the next video, we're going to see where this little platform takes us. So, uh, until then, I'm 480 Volts. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Pieces!